<laughs> we shipped CTV3 a few months ago, and since then, the team has been hard at work and enhancing uh, Parview. Right, I need to get used to the name, Parview. Uh, so what I wanted to do is to have you see what you've done, and the best way to do that is actually to have you join me on a journey of discovery using Parview, and we're going to make it real. Uh, not Contoso here today. We're going to do it with, uh, with a real data set. We're going to have a data set coming from a company called Box Office Mojo, this subsidiary of IMDb. And they collect all the information about all the movies through history, all the actors, all the sales, everything you wanted to know about the movie industry. They have that. And so this is real. No data was harmed in the preparation of this demo. Okay. <laughs> not yet. <at> least. <laughs> So uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to start, and we, first we're going to take a look at the taste of the audience. Right? What, what are we watching? And we're going to take a look at the, at the movies here. Uh, we're going to put the uh, genres, and for each genre, we're going to see how much money the industry invested in the budget of those movies, and how much money was grossed for the, the genre. And we're going to make it a bit larger, um, make it a bit kind of maybe like this. And like everything else in, in Parview, uh, we can make it into a different shape. So we're going to make it into a scatter plot. And we can see a very interesting chart here. And we can see two outliers. We'll get to those outliers in a moment. But I do want to take a look here and uh, add another element here. We're going to look at the movie titles and the domestic gross sales of those movies. And now we have uh, you know, maybe sorted uh, top down. Sorting is a new feature that we have uh, since CTP3. Everything and, we're showing here yep. is in CTP3, yep. right? Yep. Everything else is after city pizza, right? So what, what you see here, right? I'm looking at the, at the movie list here, and you find the usual suspect, you know, Avatar, Titanic, The Dark Knight, all the big blockbusters are available here. And one of the things that when I'm looking at this list and I see those two outliers here, I'm thinking, well, what could be those two outliers? And when I ask people and they look at the list and say, oh, it must be science fiction, it must be some action movies, but it's neither. It's, it's kind of interesting. The first one is kind of, kind of you can imagine what it is. It is animation movies. Okay? So animation movies just ruling the industry these days, not, you know, even cumulative across the history, which is kind of very interesting. But the second one was the most surprising of all. It's just none of the movies of that genre show up in that list. This is, these are the comedies. Com okay, wow, that's kind of interesting. Where, you know, none of the blockbusters are comedies. Where did it come from? So I thought maybe they just make a lot of those. And I tried to see if this really is true. So I, I took the movie title and asked to make the size of the Bible, the count of the movie titles. And it's, now it's obvious, yes. We have lots of comedies here. Okay, so comedies, you know, the industry just makes tons and tons of comedies. And this is why we make so much money. Now, but what are those comedies? I tried to kind of recall what are those comedies that made all this money. So I used the highlighting feature of PowerView. And I clicked and I can see here, you know, look at the list. Number one, Meet the Focus. I, in a thousand years, I would not have imagined that Meet the Focus is the number one comedy of all times, right? <laughs> it's true, but this is real. It's absolutely real, right? So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I said, okay, is it, has it been always like this? So I thought we can go and, and go and explore how the industry changed over time. So I added here um, a new element here, which is the release decade. It's really not exactly the decade. I'm going to make it into multiples. And we'll see what happens when I'm making it into multiples. And you can see I have four quadrants here. All the movies before 1979, the 80s, the 90s, and the, next, the current millennium. Now, of course, you can see here that you know, we can get a pretty nice picture on the current millennium, but it's very hard to see what happens before because you know, in, the, in the 1970s, you know, they paid 10 cents per movie. I don't know, maybe they paid in drachmas. I, I really don't know how they... But it's certainly not the same scale, right? <laughs> uh, so what we've done here, using, you know, because these are measures that are all coming from the BI semantic model, we can go in and, and help the system by... Uh, by using the uh, changes of scale. So instead of looking at absolute dollars, I'm going to look at percentages of the, uh, of the sales and the, re the revenues and the budget. So I'm going to go and look to relative. That will give me percentages. And now I get a very different picture. Now everything is percentages of the spends, percentage of the gross sales. And we can go and, like everything else in power view, I can go and make it larger. Let's close the filters here. And let's see what we have here. We start with what happened before 1979. Now, you look at the pattern here, it looks like a shotgun, right? It, it's, there's actually no strong correlation between investment and return on investment. You, it, the guys who were running the industry were pretty much clueless. They had no idea how to invest their money. <laughs> they right? needed BI. <laughs> <laughs> they did not have BI. In fact, they, you can see the adoption of BI starting to move. You know, it's getting better in the 90s, <laughs> better in the 90s, and 2000, right? It's, 
you know, absolutely. You know, I think today, that's a co- that is definitely a correlated <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> today, it's a science. It, 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 you can see almost a straight line, right? Uh, now, the other thing is, remember the comedies? Look how nicely they moved across the, the decades. Yeah? You could not find the comedies here in the 1979s. And in the 80s, they became popular. They became you know, ahead of the pack in the 90s. And now they're really kind of up there uh, in, in, the, in, in these days. Now, animation is even more stunning. Look what happened to animation. Again, I'm highlighting animation. Look what happened here. So in the, in the old days, you know, maybe Walt Disney made a few. That's it, right? In the 80s, nobody did anything with animation. And then something happened in the 1990s. 1995, Story Story was out. And that changed everything. You can see it. it's animation pulling up after Toy Story, Monsters, Inc. Every, everything changed. Everybody started producing these animation movies. And today, animation movies just ruling the industry. Now, just look at how kind of insight we're getting out of this, uh, this tool. Just a few simple gestures, and you get this whole story yeah, going one on. one thing. The only time you ever touched the keyboard was to zoom in. Yeah, you never have to touch the keyboard, except when you're doing demonstration and you want to show the big fonts, right? Uh, now, let's, uh, let's move on a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just move and create. So I, I wanted to see kind of one of the most common business questions that people have is, uh, how sales are changing over time. So very easily, I have here the revenue table that comes from these guys. I'm going to go and uh, look at the revenue and look at the months and make this one you know, a bit larger. And we're going to make it into, uh, I think a column chart would be nice. And what you see here that it's very, you know, it's not smooth. It's really not smooth, right? You can see here these peaks. And if I'm hovering over the peaks, you're going to get this. This is July, and this is July, and this is July, and you get the point, right? July, you know, in, in the movie industry, Christmas is literally in July, right? This is where they make all the money. It's all in July. <laughs> now, the other thing I can see here is that there is a nice upward trend until 2007. And then it drops and really recovers for the first time this year. So what happened between those two July? That's kind of interesting. So first of all, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to use the zooming functionality of the chart and just take a look at everything that is from 2008. And you can see, actually, I can go and scroll around it, right? It's a nice, very easy to do that. But what I'm going to take a look is, first of all, what happened this summer in July 2011? One click, and I can see, well, I thought I clicked, here we go. Uh, one click, and I can see uh, here on the list, the top movies that we had were Harry Potter and Transformers. Well, we just have, you know, Remember, this was the summer, right? It's not hard to remember. But the question is, what happened in that other July, the second best July in 2007? What, was, what were these movies? Well, that was really interesting. So I clicked here, and let's see what we got here. Transformers and Harry Potter. <laughs> so in this industry, if you want to have a great summer, another Transformer, another Harry Potter, and you are secure, right? <laughs> okay, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at another thing here. So what I've done here... I'll repair it here. You know, so we have here a set of all the people participating in the movie industry. Directors, producers, actors. And what I did is I summed up all the money that they're, if they participated in the movie, I counted that movie revenue on their name. Right? So I can see here in the top of the list, Steven Spielberg, almost $10 billion of revenue from, their, from its movies, his movies. But what I wanted to do is really focus on, on just on actors. So I'm going to focus here and just filter this table to just look at actors. And here we go. Um, and this was really interesting. When I look at the list, when I ask people what would be that list, people told me, oh, I expect the first you know, top actor to be Tom Hanks or Harrison Ford, you know, these big name actors. And what you find is that top five, Tom Hanks and Harrison Ford are doing really well, but they're not number one. And in fact, you find many surprises on the top five here. So number one is Samuel L. Jackson. He's a good actor, right? He's a very good actor, but he's no Tom Hanks, right? Uh, so we'll take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's where we wanted uh, to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then you have, and then it gets even worse. Number three is Eddie Murphy, right? And number, number five is Alan Rickman. And this was, I, had, I have no idea who Alan Rickman was. Yeah. Who, he got the number five, and he I don't know. He doesn't know who you are. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to solve the mystery of Alan Rickman. So I'm going to go in. I should have gone off what? stage for this one too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and I'm going to add the photo to that table. And I'm going to make it larger. And now you, the mystery is solved. Who is Alan Rickman? 
Professor Snape, right? From Harry Potter, right? He did eight blockbuster movies with Harry Potter, and it just counts on his name. It doesn't have to be Harry Potter or Hermione or anybody else. It, it can be Professor Snape, and it counts on his name. And since he was also the bad guy from Die Hard, which those kids were just, you know, in nursery, you know, and then, then you know, it, they, he had the advantage there. He did more movies. Okay, that's interesting. Then they asked, so how come Samuel L. Jackson is ahead of everybody else? So I, I remember what we found out about the comedy. So I said, maybe it has something to do again with the number of movies. So I'm, to go, I'm going to go in and take a look at the number of movies that each one made. I'm going to add the movies count in here. And when I do that, take a look what we have. Samuel L. Jackson has 83 movies. You know, it's about twice as many as anybody else on the list. So you know, he's, just, he's just a movie machine, right? Now, <laughs> now I thought, you know, how, what are the other actors that are having lots of movies? So you, remember, we have here 13,000 actors in this database. So who is making more movies than Samuel L. Jackson? And I found out there's only one actor that makes more movies than Samuel L. Jackson. He's a legend. We have school called after him. Let's take a look here. I'm going to just sort it by the movie count and take a look. Who is the only actor who has more movies than Samuel L. Jackson? It's John Wayne. Okay? And, <laughs> Out of 13,000 people, Samuel, John Wayne's number one, Samuel Jackson's number two. Right? That's amazing, right? So, uh, so I thought, you know, let's make, let's make it into a bar chart. So I'm going to take these two things out. I'm going to make it into a bar chart. And um, kind of get that. Oh, let's sort it by the, uh, you know. So you can sort, things, you can sort over the, uh, on the chart directly. And oh, we forgot one more thing, right? Eddie Murphy, right? You know, what is Eddie Murphy doing in that list, right? So I thought, yeah, I know Beverly Hills. Come on, this is not, you know, come on, Eddie Murphy. Come on. So I thought, what, what's going on here? So I have here, I prepared here the set of movies that uh, each, you know, that each actor is when I, you know, made. So when I click on Eddie Murphy, I'm going to see what movies he made. And then the mystery got resolved. You see, top four are Shrek's. Remember what is Eddie Murphy in Shrek? He's donkey, right? <laughs> so this was kind of stunning to me, right? You know, you, to be number three on the movie list, you don't have to save Private Ryan. You don't have to save a far, far away galaxy. You have to be a donkey. Okay. So. You've uh, spent too much time with this data. <laughs> so, I, so we are, you know, it's really fantastic discoveries we see here. And together, these things tell a story. And what you've done in, in, you know, since we shipped to GP3 is we allowed you to create a set of views together on the screen. So you can actually have a view sorter, you can work with it, you build essentially a complete presentation of those views here. Uh, you can go here and you can, you know, another one that I pre-created here in advance. Um, and then you can go and go and present it to, to other people. Uh, you can go here, full view, and, and go and, uh, you know, maybe uh, switch, flip between those. It's still fully interactive, so I can take a look at the movies that Tom Hanks made and so forth really easily. So it's fully interactive. You know what would be a great feature? Export to PowerPoint. Well, export to PowerPoint. Well, you know, when we made a decision to cut that feature from the release, we had people with torches and, for, you know, pitchforks banging on our doors. And I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> We got a lot of heat for that one, and, but we just couldn't make it. We just, you know, we just had to cut it. But the team really pulled it off. And yesterday, or just last night, we, we were able to confirm that we are going to have export to PowerPoint. So everything you see here is going to be live in PowerPoint, live using PowerPoint. Yep. You can click through and okay. basically get the fully interactive. Yep. So well, I'm done with this part of the demo. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to keep them busy while I'm getting ready for the next part. Okay. okay. Yeah, brace yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, you know, as a, as a user of this tool, it is fun, you know, and to be able to explore the data, and hopefully we've given you a sense of kind of the fun part of it, and we think that's, you know, a great thing.